Here are 15 vegan tips that will save you time, money, effort, brain space. These are things that I've learned along the way. Number 11 is my personal favorite. Let's dive straight into the video. Number one is to buy in bulk, things like potatoes, things like rice and oats. Buy big bags, especially if you've got the storage because it's a lot cheaper. Sushi rice, bags of oats, things like this. They store for absolutely ages and save you loads of money and you never run out. My tip number two is to invest in a pressure cooker or an instant pot, I think they call them in America. Invest in one of these. I didn't have one until I was 40. <laughs> and I tell you what, it's changed my game. In the kitchen, it's so, so useful. Brilliant for making one pot meals, fantastic for making the perfect rice, really good for making slow cooked meals, so many good reasons. And also you can set it, come home from work eight hours later to a hot meal. Now that is not a bad move. I didn't buy one for so long because I thought they were gonna be hundreds of pounds. Turns out I was completely wrong and they are not that bad. So invest in one, honestly, they are brilliant, brilliant things. Tip number three is to cook your starches in bulk. Cook them in advance and always have them in the fridge ready to grab when you need to make a meal. These big potatoes, they take quite a while to oven bake. So just do them in one go and keep them for the next few days in the fridge. Tip number four is to always make sure you have frozen fruits and vegetables in the freezer ready to go. They're perfect for when you have a lazy day, when you just don't know what to make. And also the benefit of having them frozen is that they were picked and frozen when they were perfectly ripe. Sometimes buying stuff fresh actually means we're buying it before it was ready to be eaten. So often the nutrient density is very, very high in frozen fruits and veggies. So keep them in your freezer. Tip number five is to grab yourself a vegetable chopper. If you're eating whole food plant-based and you're doing lots of home cooking, this will save you so much time. It's worth the 20 pounds, I think 16 pounds, $20. Grab yourself one of these guys. This has changed my life. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous, yeah, it does. But you just fill this with onion, mushroom, courgette, zucchini, peppers, whatever you've got, and it chops them in actually seconds. Not even minutes, seconds, and you've got all of your vegetables chopped well worth the money. My tip number six is to get used to using lots of herbs and spices. If you're whole foods plant-based, you really want to ramp up that flavor, bring out the flavor of vegetables by using herbs, spices, and seasonings. There are lots and lots of things, far too many for me to try to list, but really get used to using herbs and spices and also liquid seasonings, things like liquid smoke, coconut aminos, marmite, vegemite, use things like mushroom seasoning, use things like soy sauce. There are loads and loads of ways that you can improve the depth of flavor in foods by using lots of seasonings. Another thing that my son always does is he adds chocolate to meals. Sounds a bit strange, but he balances out all of the flavors by adding some chocolate as well as the savory umami flavors too. So lots of herbs, flavors, seasonings into those meals really will ramp up the flavor. Tip number seven is to remember that there are proteins in all plant foods. There are proteins in oats and cabbage and carrots. There's protein in cauliflower, spinach and kale. So unless you're a bodybuilder, or unless you are running marathons or perhaps you're breastfeeding or trying to have a baby and you're struggling, if there are certain conditions that are different maybe in your life right now and you are worrying about protein, then of course go and speak to a dietitian. I am certainly not one, but I know from reading as much as I have and listening to all of the plant-based doctors Doctors, that protein deficiency A is pretty much unheard of and that we can get enough protein from eating an array and a selection of whole plant foods. So do not worry about having a protein problem or a protein deficiency if you are eating a whole selection and world of colourful rainbow plant foods. Tip number eight is don't recycle all of your glass jars, things that you use from pickles and sauces. Keep those jars, then you've always got a storage container for any leftover food. Tip number nine is to buy your legumes, lentils, beans, buy those things dry and cook them at home rather than buying them in tins and cans. Things like mung beans, pinto beans, these are brilliant and it's between eight and 15 times more expensive to buy them in tins and cans. Though of course it's really convenient and sometimes of course I do that too. But if you can buy things dry, you will save a ton of money. Tip number 10 is that you can make your own vegetable stock for free. This is really easy to do. Just keep all of the trimmings of your vegetables, off cuttings of carrots, onions, cabbage, bits of vegetables that you don't want to eat and throw in a meal, store them in your freezer when you've got a big bag full, cook them, simmer them for hours and hours, strain them, then you've got free vegetable stock. 
These can go in any old glass jars you've got, stick it in your fridge and freezer, and you've always got stock at hand. Tip number 11 is incredible. You wanna increase the amount of cruciferous vegetables in your diet. Studies have shown that cruciferous vegetables particularly are cancer fighting foods. They can reduce the speed at which cancer cells multiply in our body. Pretty amazing, right? And I learned this incredible tip from Dr. Gregor. I love him. Dr. Gregor explains that if we cut our cruciferous vegetables 40 minutes before we cook them, something called sulforaphane is created. And it's that sulforaphane that we need to ingest in our bodies that gives us this protection against cancer. So please eat more cruciferous vegetables, cut them in advance, then cook them later. If you're enjoying this video, please consider giving me a like and definitely subscribe. It will really help you to get notified next time I release more content. My tip number 12 is to use your Asian and Eastern European supermarkets or sections of your superstore because you will find things here that you just won't find in your regular store if you live in maybe America, Canada, UK. You will need to go to your Asian supermarkets for certain things that just are brilliant for eating whole food plant-based. Certain seasonings, things like mushroom seasoning is very difficult to get in the UK. You will find it in your Asian supermarket. All of your sushi items, you know, your sushi rice and your nori sheets, things like that. They're really, really inexpensive in these supermarkets. If you want to go and buy them in the traditional supermarkets in the UK, they are four or five times the price. Herbs and spices, things like that. Really go and explore. It's like a treasure chest of brilliant foods that you can buy really, really cheaply. So definitely utilize those stores. Tip number 13 is to use ice cube trays to store liquids in your freezer that you might have too much of or that you don't want to use all in one go. For example, red wine. If you love to use red wine in certain meals and maybe you live alone and you don't want to have a whole bottle open, you can store it in ice cube trays. Same with plant milk. Make little plant milk ice cubes. Brilliant for smoothies in the summer. Brilliant because they stay cold, of course, and it helps to keep that drink nice and fresh and icy. Things like stock. If you make too much stock, don't throw it down the sink. Put it into ice cube trays and then next time you're cooking, pop them out and you've got them ready to use. Tip number 14 is to go to your grocery store about half an hour before they're gonna close and you will get lots of reduced produce. I'm lucky I live very close to a supermarket so I nip over there, herbs, berries, fruits, vegetables. You can get them at like 10p, 20p, literally cents and pennies for big bags of stuff. And if you're not gonna use it that day, half of this stuff will go in your freezer utilize your freezer, things like berries. If they've got berries for like 10, 15p, throw them in the freezer. They're brilliant for smoothies, brilliant for making desserts, pancakes. So use your freezer and go to that supermarket and get those bargains. My tip number 15 is a little hack for mushrooms that have gone a little bit over. So if you open those mushrooms and they don't look so good, maybe they've gone a little bit soggy, you either use them in your stock or you can rinse them, put them in a paper bag back in the fridge overnight and the next day they will not look that bad. They will have perked back up again. So that's a little tip for you. My tip number 16 is if you buy fresh herbs that are cut in the supermarket, treat them as you would fresh flowers. Put them in a vase of water on your windowsill and they will live a lot longer than just putting them straight into your fridge. If you click on your screen right now, you can watch my video on how I meal plan. This keeps me organized on track, lets me stay in control. And so I'm always whole food, plant-based and oil free. Click on the link down below and you'll also be able to grab my meal planning pack. I will see you next time. Bye.